if a man's heart is wrong, forget about his giftings, forget about his anointing, forget about the excellency of grace that he manifests. God has no business with that man anymore. Ezekiel 28 verse 13 and 14, if you look at this scripture, he said, thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone, that means everything God values is what he gave you. Have you seen a man before that literally has all of the giftings and the dimensions of God? When you look at him, everything you think a man should desire, as far as grace is concerned, is in that person. That's the description of this guy. He said, all the precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold. He said, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipe were prepared in thee from the day that you were created. So number one, he spoke about the excellency of his being and number two, he spoke about his operation in the realm of God. That's the level of beauty that this creature was decked with. And then he had musical instruments. So any direction he turns, he produces worship. Even when he's sleeping, he's worshiping. Do you know how important this kind of being will be in the realm of God? The Bible said in verse 14, thou was the anointed. That means among all the angelic entities, because he called him a cherub. He said, thou was the anointed cherub. This is the cherubim that has a measure of the Holy Ghost on him. There was no record in the spirit that any angel carried the measure of the Holy Spirit. There was no record in the spirit that any of the ancients carried the Holy Ghost on their inside. The Holy Ghost came upon them and lifted. He said, but this one was anointed. That means the Holy Ghost was smeared upon him. So apart from the diamond, the Holy Spirit was smeared upon him. I have said thee. So, he said, thou was in the mountain of God and you walked to and fro in the midst of the coals of fire. So this guy is supposed to carry holiness as his nature because he's walking where men, beings are purified. But something went wrong. He said, until iniquity was found in you. And the moment iniquity was found in him, it didn't matter the beauty that he carried. It didn't matter the assignment that he was doing. If you like, call him the leader of worship in heaven. His status meant nothing. Your beauty does not matter. The anointing you carry does not matter. The giftings you have no longer matter. The moment your heart is corrupt. Because the heart is the seal of divine approval. Me, who is leading you here? If my heart becomes wrong, God can move to the person cleaning toilet and move him from me and go and start something else and migrate and leave this monument. The whole thing here will become a monument. God has no business with that man anymore. This is why in our world today, you see many people manifesting gifts, but you can't find the honor, the approval, the glory of God with them. And then you are wondering what went wrong. Giftings are important. They make room for you. I've taught you before. But if divine approval is not with you, you will carry reproach with your gift. This is why you see our generation today. People are hustling online every day for validation. A man claims he raises the dead. A man claims he hears God. But why are you so eager about validation? Because there's no honor. There's no dignity. There's no reverence. The fear of God is no longer with men. And so anybody can talk about anybody anyhow. But it was not so in the days of the fathers. When men had divine approval, the terror of God was their weapon. So you couldn't even talk against them. There was a holy fear that came upon you if you wanted to mention their name because you know these men were holy men of God. But this is an era where we have gifted men of God, we have anointed men of God, but we don't have holy men of God. That's why you can talk about anybody anyhow. The fear of God is not there. Even the ones that come out and threatening people that you something will happen, nothing happens because the approval of God is not there. But a man who carries divine approval, he doesn't need to threaten you. If you talk yourself, we know that something has gone wrong. A generation needs to cry, but the foundation of iniquity is in the heart. Until iniquity was found in you. What is that arrow that is in your heart? There's an arrow there. There's an arrow of insecurity. There's an arrow of bitterness. There's an arrow of malice. There's an arrow of unforgiveness. There's an arrow of wickedness. You want people to, to fail. When people insult you or when people are your enemies, when they fail, you are happy. They tell you, ha, that brother that did this thing, they said he had an accident. Ha, God. It's where? It's where? Meanwhile, there is joy springing out of your heart. That means your heart is a fountain of wickedness. Did you not read what Jesus said? He said, even your enemies, pray for them. It's not about your enemies, it's about your heart. He said, pray for them. By doing so, you heap a coal of fire on them. Because you may try to kill your enemy and in the process, you kill yourself. I've been hurt many times. I wanted to attack. God said, you will corrupt your priesthood. It's a strategy of the devil. The reason he came to cause problem between the two of you is so that your gates can be open. You will think you want to kill your enemy. You will kill that person, but your heart has opened. And when the devil enters that heart, he will exploit it for your lifetime. That's why you guard your heart. Many sicknesses come from the heart. 
cancer you see sickness that you don't know the where they come from is the heart if the heart is corrupt death begins to come out of it death you will see the help of god you won't be able to access it you will finish your race you will think you have done a great work on earth you will appear in eternity you'll be naked because they will tell you the energy that motivated that prayer was competition you wanted to show every other prayer warrior that you were a stronger prayer warrior they will tell you the energy that motivated that crusade is competition you wanted to show people that you too the ministry was working and all the applause they gave you that is your reward so you spent your reward on earth meanwhile the people that were never celebrated seemingly never celebrated they will become champions in eternity and the problem with eternity is that everything there is forever and ever forever and ever that's the challenge that's why you got it here this is where to work on your heart you will not see the need to cry for god to touch your heart except as you know how important the heart is before god he said the heart is the basis for divine approval that means god does not approve of men based on what they do you know we are so carried away by what we do and no matter how spiritual what you are doing is if your heart is wrong you won't move god god will be irritated when a man's heart is corrupt even god can't help you if the heart is wrong the whole activity can become a show one of the scriptures i read that made me to tremble jesus was teaching about prayer in matthew chapter 6 and he was giving illustration about the pharisees and jesus said two things that were so striking number one he said don't be like the pharisees they take pride in praying for long when i read the scripture i said come on lord i thought it's when we pray for long that we stay enough in your presence for you to walk on us how can you now be talking and asking us to avoid those who pray for long because if the heart is wrong the whole activity can become a show so an activity as spiritual as prayer can begin to irritate God because of the heart posture. Imagine the labor of prayer. Then you spend your life 30 years praying and God comes and says, I don't recommend that thing you are doing. It's a show in the flesh. Jesus spoke about two men who came to pray to God. He said the other one was so boastful. He said, thank you, Lord, because I give to the poor. I fast regularly. I do all of this. I do all of that. He said the other one was so humble that he could not as much as look into heaven. And he asked them a question. He said, which of them went from that place of prayer with relationship with God? Without being told, all of them knew. What substantiated the activity? It was the heart posture. Is there anything wrong praying long? No. Is there anything wrong praying with intensity? No. Is there anything even wrong appreciating God for the grace and the ability he has given you? No. But the moment it becomes a show, you have missed it all. That's why you got it here. Every time you come to pray to the Lord, tell him, my heart is open. Please help me. Because there are many things you do, even you don't know it's a sin. It's the Holy Ghost that will shine the light of eternity upon your heart and tell you that thing you said to that person came from maliciousness that thing you said to that person came from wickedness that thing you did to that person came from pride is the light of heaven because when that light shines Jesus will stand and you will stand side by side because you are not edited from your best you are edited from Christ they say we all with open faces beholding as in the glass the glory of the Lord we are metamorphosed we are not to change into our best versions we are to change into the likeness of Christ so any man who knows how to try the heart in the the place of prayer will build a perfect heart. 